subject has been talked about a lot, but the Yamaha four stroke, the six, eight, and 9.9 .9 all share the same parts except for the carburetor. Uh, so what I've done is I've converted this six horsepower into a 9.9 .9 just by changing the carburetor. So bear with me, I'm not a professional video maker. So this is the new carburetor. It's a direct fit. I will say make sure that you have your gaskets. I didn't, so I had to make one, but there's one gasket, a second gasket, and on this side of the little air intake housing, there is an O-ring. These gaskets are, you know, a few bucks, and that's O-rings a few dollars as well, so you know, you can pre-order those and be ready unlike myself this is the six horsepower carburetor now the eight horsepower carburetor is going to be different as well as the 9.9 .9. and this is the amazon carburetor that i bought it had a lot of good reviews on it and i mean the quality is nice i checked all the the bolts to the bowl and to whatever that is on the top uh even this linkage uh, screw here it seemed to be torqued down really well so I, I don't have any complaints with it thus far another thing I did was I put an hour meter on it because I want to be able to make sure that my rpms um, you know are in the correct range with the load that I have in the propeller and this is the Amazon part for that and by the way, I think this carburetor was like $68 plus tax, so maybe $72. Bucks. And this was like $13, $14. Uh, and this works really well also. And the way that I've mounted that is I've, there's two lines that pass through off your tiller handle for your throttle control. And that's actually... A rubber gasket so you can actually uh, I stripped off the sheathing to this wire and had some uh, exposed strands that I poked through there and then I used the needle nose on the backside to pull it and I did have to poke a little bit with my needle nose to get them going and then I just routed it around the side there's a lot of other loose wires so there I didn't see the need to really Secure things down all that well. I went with uh, it says to do four to five wraps. One, two, three. I actually ended up doing six, and you can see how I have it secured there. Uh, this one up high keeps it from unraveling, and that one secures it. I did leave me a little bit of slack just in case I got off on how I wanted to mount it. chose to mount it was just using the uh, the adhesive velcro that came with it and I wanted it somewhere I can see it going down the road and so that kind of makes it nice that you can just you know hopefully see that just make sure your hand doesn't get you know you have to watch out for that but that's about it and to take it off you simply just pull it off Everything's right there. Now, I don't know how waterproof that is. I don't, you know, but I left enough. You know, I could probably put it in there like that if it was raining or caused a problem. I'm not sure yet, but that's what I've got so far. So, let me uh, fire this thing up and let you see how well it works. So I need to look up the specs on it again, but I think around 900 is where it's supposed to be. Now it's going to wander off from that a little bit. I don't know if that's the engine having a little variation in the RPM idle or if it's in the actual tachometer itself. 
But as far as this, you know, this carburetor, I mean, I think it's a real nice upgrade for, uh, you know, 70 bucks. Especially since I picked this engine up right here for 600 bucks. So that's essentially getting me, you know, a 10 horsepower, four stroke, modern engine, you know, for a cheap price. So if you see a six or an eight and you're looking for a 10, just keep that in mind. And also for the people who want to replace, you know, a problematic 9.9, .9, this seems to be a good solution. Now I'm gonna keep my other carburetor just, you know, in case I sell it to someone and they want, you know, they really want it to be a six horsepower for some restrictions or something. And since the cow does say six horsepower, but, uh, but yeah, that's it. And this thing, let's see here, it works nice. One thing you'll notice, and it's kind of nice, I guess, it verifies things, but if you, once you get on up to the 6,000 RPMs that this thing is rated at, it's going to start cutting out, and uh, because it kills the ignition to it, so it's no longer going to be accurate. But let me put the cowl on so I don't have to hold this thing. All right, here we go. Get it where y'all can see it. Yeah, so you got a rev limiter in there that's gonna kick in and prevent you from overthrottling it. Oh, and another thing is that I did not have to make any adjustments with this because it has different modes, whether you got a single cylinder, um, whether you got a two cylinder, whether you have a two stroke, there's some variants in here, but this was already, you know, I hooked it up and knew it was gonna be idling around $900. My, 900 uh, rpms so you know my idle at that time was around 1100 i just simply adjusted the idle for that and i did not have to make any adjustments on the carburetor let me shut this down i didn't have to make any adjustments on the carburetor but i'll show you what i did have to do okay so there is your idle adjustment there is your your choke lever uh, you'll notice this one has an accelerator pump which helps deliver fuel there is an idle air adjustment right there and i haven't had to mess with it so unless i get it out on the water and i see the need to i won't be touching that and this right here the way that i did it once you have, if you if you have this disconnected, you want to loosen that screw, slide your shaft through there, but have it kind of loose, and then get your engine up to operating temp and set your idle. From that point, I just took, I pushed back um, that way to take the slack out of this rod, and real, you know, ever so slightly, I pushed back this way to take the slack out of this setup so that I can achieve full throttle and that is the only adjustment that I know to do. I hope this helps somebody.